everybody welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio for those that don't know my name is Nicole Reed, and today we are here for slow stitching Saturday and we are working on the Birdsville cushion again this is for those that are new here this is a continuing series I am basically just working on this a little bit at a time and I'm bringing you along for the journey so sometimes we might spend an hour together sometimes we might only spend 30 minutes together but it is all about the slow stitching this is all being done by hand and uh, as I said it's the Birdfield cushion and it is by Wendy Williams you can actually um, find all the information about this pattern over on her website um, and I got my kit which came with all the felt the backing fabric um, I just got it in a little pouch here so it came with some backing fabric for my cushion it came with all the felt it came with the pattern and it came with the front of my cushion as well which I'll open up in just a minute so today we I'm just checking in with you showing you um, what I have done and uh, basically um, what I'm going to be doing going forward you can see there I've got my little leaves and all the rest of it and I've just got stuff everywhere at the moment so grab yourself a cuppa it is very early on a Saturday morning I was readily woken up by my neighbors coming home from wherever with their music blaring and it did not impress my husband at all so he went out and he yelled at him at the lovely hour of 5 30 in the morning so if it sounds like that I'm talking in a low hush tones that is because um, my daughter is asleep in in the room just uh, here she, she'll be due to get up soon it's not too too early but I don't want to disturb her either so basically I thought I'd spend some time with you today and just do a little bit of crafting nothing like starting your Saturday morning um, with a bit of doof doof music a little bit of yelling and uh, yeah they're very quiet now to say the least so they probably <laughs> I sent, sent a text to my husband because we are in different rooms We don't because I snore really badly and it disturbs him and he drives a truck and he needs to be well rested and so I sent him a text, oh my hero <laughs> and he sent a text back and said they look, there was two in the car because they come home in their car okay they don't play music in the house they sit in their car and it's so loud that it vibrates the whole house and I'm on stilts, like I'm not even on the ground, I'm off the ground, it vibrates the whole house and I can feel it in my chest. And where their driveway is and where they park the car is right next to um, the bedrooms so of our house. And so basically, <laughs> he's gone out and yelled, he goes, they look like deers in headlights, bug eyed, <laughs> crazy man screaming at them <laughs> with his slippers on. <laughs> I heard him they didn't go out and I'm just like oh my god <laughs> it's on it's on all right anyway that's how I've started my morning and I thought I need to just get into the zen of some stitching um, before I get into more quilting and more recording today because I'm still running behind um, that's just been one of those weeks as you if you've been watching my videos this week you know it's been one of those weeks so I have my cup up uh, my voice is a little bit croaky because I've just got out of bed so I do apologize for that hopefully the mic is working really well there was a little bit of issue with my mic the other day on my um, on uh, crafting with DDs um, for some reason I think just where I sat it it just wasn't picking up the audio very well so hopefully this time it's um, in a good position and it's picking up the audio pretty good I mean it's a cheap microphone I do everything as much as I can on a budget um, because I just do I've got kids I've got uni fees I've got all that sort of stuff so yeah um, and this is what we made on the channel so if you haven't seen that that's Thursday's video and it's just a little snap pouch and basically I have another idea for a project and so what I do is I start doing little bits and pieces that I want to add to it so I start off doing small and then eventually I will have a pattern for sale that'll go to the pattern testers after I've you know done all the things so um, obviously one of the patterns is going to have you know somewhere to store all your notions and all that sort of stuff so I sort of start off with prototypes and then I real like I do a little bit of math and and all that sort of stuff so I sort of took you on that journey of me because this is totally just pulled out of my head I had nothing written down I just started with some random sizes and all that sort of stuff and so yeah so that's what we've ended up with and I've been able to use a little bit of like some more of my hexagons that I got from swaps and whatnot and leftover fabric from 
um, some projects. So this one here was a leftover fr um, from a cotton and steel fabric line that I got back in 2015 that I made a little quilt out of um, for a swap. So yeah, I don't actually have that here to show you. Um, so yeah, so basically, and then I've just, you know, put some of these in a place to keep my, um, my counting pins and you know bits and pieces and whatnot so so far so good i'm thinking it's working and it's a good way for me to test products that i want to use like i'll see things about oh that's pretty i could add that into something so um it's a great way for me to test things and also work out whether this is going to be you know um, practical or not like it's it's um it worked out really well there is a little bit of bulk in the spine um, but I think that that is just helping it to look like fold out and stuff like that. I will probably, you know, over the next month or so, sometimes it can take up to six months because I just do it in my spare time um, where I can get down and just, you know, take some notes and all that sort of stuff. But this was pretty much just pulled straight out of my head and um, yeah, there was no math involved or anything. I just knew what I wanted in there, like a couple of things that I wanted in there. Um, and I just wanted to test out how to do those. So doing them on the smaller scale, which means I'll be able to do them on the large. So one of them was this zipper, whether it would be feasible to, um, you know, do it in there and, and how I'd stitch it all down and, and stuff like that. So I'm not real, like this is great and very functional and it works perfectly and it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it but if I was doing this as a pattern for sale I'm not real happy with this bit here that I've got I need to work out a different way of doing this so these little projects that I do that lead to the bigger projects um, really help me to um, find any flaws that are going to happen before I send it off to the pattern tester and then that's like it'll go to the pattern testers and I'll get three or four people to um, make it and then basically they will give me their feedback what they think worked and what didn't or what I should remove what I should add in um, you know they'll also look at the pictures that I've put into the pattern and stuff like that tell me whether they they should be clearer and stuff like that so by the time you've done a pattern and this is not the pattern that I'm, I'm doing this is free you can go and make this right now um, it could be you know like I could have made it 15 20 times before it actually goes off to a pattern tester hence why i haven't done a lot of patterns in the last few years because i've been really restricted for time and stuff like that but i'm doing some rescheduling and stuff um, so if you would like to be a pattern tester and or a cross stitch tester for me um, and also a couple of other cross stitches uh, that may be looking for model stitches and, and whatnot and it's something that you would like to do um, to help us out because we're very small, we're indie designers and we're trying to, to, to grow. So there is a little bit of um, uh, like, basically we're asking you to do this for free. We, we can't actually pay you at this point in time. I mean, not to say that we can't in the future. I can't speak for anybody else, but I can only speak for myself. But um, yeah, so if you're willing, like you, you basically, um, you get to keep everything you stitch or make and whatnot you get the pattern once it's completely done and everything you've got that for free so then you have the option to make and sell um, those products and stuff like that but if you would like to do that there is a link down underneath this video for pattern testers um, I am just recruiting at the moment there's not much happening in the Facebook group that we have um, that is a pre-work requisite we need you to be on Facebook because it's a great place for us to talk to you and when I say us um, I've added a Dawn Williams um, who is lighthouse stitchery to the group because she is looking for some model stitches as well so um, I've still got to have a bit of a chit chat with her and see where we end up but I've also said to her that I will basically be vetting everybody a little bit further once I get through my retreats and everything like that so if you are already in that group just um, know that we haven't forgotten about you we've just added you to the group at all I've just added you to the group at the moment it is a DD's group it is definitely a group that I'm running but a couple of other designers are looking for for um and they possibly could put a shout out um looking for designers and stuff like that to, uh, not so i'm sorry uh, model stitches to help out but as i said to them i'm still vetting at this point so um i've still got to do a little bit more talking with you guys that have already um joined up 
because I it's not about you guys getting free patterns and then we don't hear anything from you we really need your help in um, stitching the products uh, up and or sewing doing cool like for me it's that there'll be uh, across the board there'll be sewing projects patterns testing and also model stitches um, are required so um, yeah so basically I'm looking at the end of November and I know it's coming up to the silly season I probably won't release any patterns to the pattern testers until January once the silly season is over there may be one or two cross stitches that I'll need done up but I already have um, one lady oh, actually I have two ladies that would probably be pretty keen to, to do that for me prior to the um, new year but that also depends on my time schedule and stuff like that so the reason that I'm talking about this is because I will be adding um, some of the designers from down the rabbit hole magazine to the group and they may put out um, a request for you to stitch now I don't want you to feel like you only have to stitch with me that is like it while it is my group um, and I appreciate that that sediment but basically if they're if I'm not putting anything out and they're putting a call out and you've got the time to do it for them um, and again they are going to require you to stitch it and finish it and give feedback okay exactly the same procedure that I will have they will do the same thing and it's just a way for them that, that there's a pool of people there that they can say hey I need one or two people to stitch this um, and they're gonna need feedback, you know, so like if a color doesn't work, um, you know, and they'll ask you to stitch it in DMC or they might ask you to stitch it in Fancy Floss. If you are someone that doesn't have Fancy Floss and you only work in DMC, be aware of that, that they may ask you to do that. And in some cases, like for me, I may have one, uh, have want something done in Fancy Floss, but also would look for someone that's done it in DMC or even Cosmo. So, um, for my Australian um, model stitches and stuff like that, if you are looking for Cosmo, I actually have Cosmo here. If I've put out a pattern and you want to do it and it requires Cosmo, just hit me up and I um, will be able to um, supply that to you um, and uh, it'll, it'll sell it to you if you're looking at for, to do it for your own personal stuff. So um, I will be able to send you the floss that is going to be required for that project if that's the case, if it's using Cosmo, because I don't want you to be out of pocket. But if you've got Cosmo and um, you're happy to use it, well, I mean, you get to keep everything anyway. So, <clears throat> and I will just send the required amount and, um, you know, with a little bit extra just on a, a floss card or something like that, that um, you'll need. I'm happy to do that because at the end of the day, I am creating patterns. Um, so yeah, so just be aware of that. If you have already joined, if you haven't, there is a form, a Google form for you to fill out. No one sees your details um, except for me um, and any of the um, people that uh, not me that are in there that are designing they will put the shout out first and uh, basically if you agree that you want to do it then um, you're also agreeing for me to give them your email address because they'll need to send you stuff so just be aware of that um, and I've been dealing with these ladies for quite some time and they are of the same opinion of me they don't share information so um, they're quite private as well so um, it's just a way for us to help us to take a little bit of the stress off um, the stress it gets quite stressful especially if you're a little bit bigger like you're still an indie designer but you're a little bit bigger and you're designing for market and things like that and then also for a magazine you're trying to build your business you're trying to get it out there um, and then you've got to stitch it it can be very difficult and very time consuming and it, burnout is high um, so this is just a way that I'm able to help these lovelies that have been helping me to build the magazine um, so I would really appreciate it um, as I said Lighthouse uh, Stitchery is one and uh, Frog Cottage Designs is the other and uh, most of you will know, know um, of them because I've spoken about them and I've shared the magazine but anyway we are here for that's all really actually related to slow stitching because it's <laughs> <laughs> cross stitch and whatnot so for me for dds i'm across the board so i do embroidery pattern testing for sewing projects i also do quilting um patterns most of the time i just test them myself but i am getting more and more busy busier <coughs> excuse me so i am looking for people to test blocks and stuff for me um and just let me know that the math is all working out and and whatnot so yeah um so 
and then I also do cross stitch as well so I do have a lot of projects and whatnot so again if it's something that you're interested in we are taking applications the form is down below you fill out the form fill out all the answers if it doesn't apply to you just put not applicable um, or NA will do just because I've got everything that you need to answer it so it won't let you move on if you don't answer all the questions so if something doesn't apply just put NA and just um, yeah then it'll let you submit the form all right so I again thank you very much to everybody that has already filled out the form I greatly appreciate that um, and I'm looking forward to working with you in the future it's just taken a little bit longer than I needed I've got um, about six weeks off over Christmas I'm still going to be filming and stuff like that but I'm not taking in any quilts or any um, custom-made orders or anything like that so that in that six weeks I will be doing a ton of designing and planning and all the things um, so there will be a lot of of correspondence happening in that group in the new, I, I'm going to call it and say the new year I may have one or two that go up in the later part of this year all right so let's have a look at what we've been doing so um, the Birdsville cushion is a project that is taking a lot longer than I expected mainly because of um, time constraints and I'm, I'm sure you're sick of hearing that but I just decided that I am just going to do a little bit at a time and just instead of trying to pump it out and rush it and not enjoy the experience slow stitching saturday is about taking that step back taking that moment to to breathe taking that moment to enjoy the process just taking the moment and being in the present okay and that is what slow stitching saturday is about so so far we've learned that if you're going to do these leaves it is better to do it to trace them out onto a bigger piece of fabric stitch all you need to do and then cut them out okay because this has been a super fiddly and unenjoyable um, thing to do I've, I mean I'm happy that I've only got 15 16 leaves to go and I'm happy that I've done them and it's super easy to do them but it's just very um, cumbersome and, and a little bit difficult and um, but they've still turned out really neat I'm pretty happy with that um, and as you can see I've still got a little um, tub to go um, if you're wondering where I got these little terracotta um, these little pots from these are actually from Audi they come with a prawn and um, scallop Mornay in it um, I think it's called Mornay, I don't know, but it's in, it's, it's near the, like all Audis are pretty much set up the same. It's near where they have the garlic prawns and the um, ready to eat salmon and all that sort of stuff. And they're just in these, they're coming too. I really enjoy them. Um, I, the, and I get them when they go on special because obviously they're a standard line, but they're not popular and I get them on special more often than not. So they knock a couple of bucks off so I can get two of these meals. And all I do is um, I just put a little little bit of greenery in there. So like broccoli, broccoli or something like that. I'll, I'll chuck in a head of broccoli and then maybe um, a half a cup of rice or something like that. And I'll have that as a meal. And um, I just cook them in my little air fryer and they come out really nicely. But the pots are great. Like they're um, glazed and everything they're not on the bottom um, but they're perfect for just little dishes and and whatnot and they stack in each other as well so I can sit them in the cupboard and and put them aside I can put them in um, storage bins and stuff like that so I've been keeping them and I've also had questions about this um, pin cushion here um, that I use and I, I keep forgetting to answer it it was sent in an email asking me where they can um, get this pin cushion from <clears throat> essentially this is a pin cushion that I have made excuse me for a second <clears throat> that I have made on um, the channel so it is my round petaled uh, pin cushion and I'll leave a link down below where you can um, go and make that but this container here again from Audi it came with a like a little mousse cheesecake something like that I got them years ago um, they often have them um, I don't buy them as often as I used to um, because I'm trying to lose a lot of weight but they are nice as a little dessert every now and again and um, yeah and so I just stuck the pincushion in because the pincushion doesn't have a bottom and then I end up picking it up and I stab myself and this is another one that I've got here so that that is uh, like a I think that was a little mousse maybe a tiramisu dessert or something that was in the Audi and so I've kept the little jar and I've used it in um, here and this is another one this this was definitely a mousse this is another little glass 
um, dessert from Audi and again I've just um, made a little pin cushion which is really dusty just realized around the button because um, I don't dust them obviously they just sit around and collect dust but you can see the needles coming out of the bottom um, and this is exactly the same one so this one here is the same size only this one here has molded to this shape and this one here has molded to this shape and all I do is just slip that in and then push it down and it just gives me that little pin cushion I could glue that in and it had never come out but um, I don't care like it's just sitting in there it doesn't come out I'm the only person in here but you can see it just sits in there and it sits in there nice and snug and I push it all down and then when I pick it up I'm not going to get like a hundred pins in my hand and that's basically these were born out of necessity because I for a long time I just had the pin cushions and if you've been around for a long time you've seen the progression of my pin cushions and whatnot um, and what I do with them but these ones sit around a lot as you can see they get cotton bits on them and this one I need to pull out and give it a really good dust um, but yeah they're great I can pick them up and not um, have pins going into my hands um, this one here is my quilting one so this will have like the applique pins that I'm using in this it's got my fork pins and then it's got um, some glass head pins in here as well it's got a couple of flat pins that I use occasionally but um, then I've got some like fancy swirly ones and it's normally a lot neater like I normally have all my pins I'm a little bit anal about my pins and I like to have so you can see here there's a collection of them there and I don't generally like to have these big plastic ones they go in this one here because these I tend to use for um, bolted fabric and stuff like that and um, or just dressmaking in general because they're a little bit bigger to pick up and whatnot so yeah so this is the one that I use more often than not on camera so you see this a lot because um, I'm doing sewing projects and stuff like that but that should answer the questions about all these pots um, where I get them from it's just reusing it like you know like it goes into the bin but a lot of people just chuck these out but we as sewers can utilize them to stop ourselves getting stuck and also it gives it a bit of weight and then I can just sit it on a shelf and it's not going to get lost or anything like that all right so I have as I said I have been working on the leaves and stuff like that as I said you want to trace that out on to the bigger pieces of felt so I would have preferred to use a bit of chalk or chalk pencil mechanical pencil which I've got here um i would have preferred to use that um because this is just a, a mechanical chalk pencil it's got nothing in it at the moment and they're by bowen um, and i think saline's also got one as well and i'll leave a link down below where you can get them they're really good you'll be able to because you can get the bowen one is good because i know that i can get different color um chalks for it so I can get white chalk I can get red chalk if I'm marking on black I can get yellow um, I can get green chalk I can get gray chalk all the things um, and it works just like a, a lead pencil and it gives you a nice fine line so I use that one mostly for my embroidery when I'm tracing my embroidery out I'll use that because it's a really fine line and you can't see it under the floss so I would, if I was doing the leaves, as I said, I'd trace them out on those big pieces and then stitch it out because then you've got more to work with. All right, the next thing that I done after that, so we'll do a little bit of update, we have put the tree. So we cut our felt, and this is not gonna all fit on camera. So I'm just gonna have to do a sliding scale. So we um, have put the felt down onto the backing, like this is the front. Of it and this is what we're calling backing fabric so it's gone down on that and we've started to back stitch that so I've done some more on this um, I've stitched uh, I think last time we we're on camera I stitched up here well I've come down since and then I've come over here and I'm starting to put the other branches on I've got all the roots down now so that's not going to move anywhere I've dropped a <laughs> so many of these pins on the floor it's almost to the point now proceed with caution if you come into my sewing room so today I thought what we'll do is we'll do a little bit more back stitching spend some time together just take a moment regroup for the week and get some slow stitching in um, I'm probably not going to talk a lot I will just talk um, at a lower uh, like 
quietly because I don't want to wake my daughter up. Um, she's in the middle of exams and whatnot, so I'm just letting her sleep. She's got work today. She's working with my husband over at the workshop, but um, I'm just letting them all sleep in at the moment. Um, yeah, so basically what we're going to do is we're just going to keep stitching this down. So you can see here, I'm just coming down here and I'm really surprised, like I'm doing this all in hand. Um, the lovely Jenny Trask, uh, she gave me some beautiful comments about this. She actually got to see this in person at the retreat and um, she goes, uh, she's amazed that I'm doing it in my hand and it's not bunching up or anything like that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, and then as I'm sort of sewing along, I'll probably put a little bit of soothing music that I've um, put together and um, or maybe sounds of the birds or something like that. And we'll just take a moment and relax and um, regroup after a hectic week. But uh, yeah, she gave me some beautiful comments about it not puckering or anything like that. So I thought that some of you might be a little bit hesitant because uh, you're over predominantly um, cross stitches and you've not done anything like this before or you've always just used hoops and as I was saying to Jenny at the retreat I'm pretty sure I said it, was talking about it how I learned um, or I may have spoken about it on the channel just it's sort of just coming back to me and I'm not 100% sure but yeah anyway as um, I've said in the past I when I first started to learn to do embroidery and fancy work I learned how from an older lady that done it all in hand she didn't use hoops or anything like that so for me I'm relatively new to using a hoop um, I will have to find it I know it's packed away somewhere um, but I have a little scarecrow that I'd done one of my um, like I'd done fancy work where I do back stitches and outline stuff and all the rest of it but I'd never just wholly and solely done like a big piece of embroidery before and I did a scarecrow um, I have to find it I'm not as 100% sure where it is or whether I turned I may have turned it into a mini quilt so it might be in the cupboard because um, I've put all my mini quilts away while I'm doing stuff out here um, before I put it up on the wall but yeah I learned how to do everything in hand so hoops and everything are relatively new for me and doing backstitch I really struggle to get it to look somewhat even um, and like I'm not going for perfection on this because at the end of the day it's a tree it's supposed to look a little bit handmade it's not supposed to look like it's come off a, a machine or anything like that so but I find that if I've got my back stitch in a hoop, I tend to not be super even. Um, I struggle with, like I've learned tips and tricks since I started stitching in a hoop. I struggle with um, perception of the length of the, the stitch. I think that it's right and then it's too big and then I, but I'm learning to move on from that. But yeah, so when I stitch in hand, I tend to just hold it in my left hand and I hold my, I, I, I'm constantly rotating my work. So basically I, I will stitch closest to me, not away from me. Okay, and um, yeah, and I will just hold it in my hand and then I will stitch along. Um, and I sort of am working this section here like I'll lean it against something I'll lean it against my leg or I'll lean against the table in this case and I'll smooth it down and make sure that it's sitting flat now the one thing I will say if you find that it's getting a little bit bunchy sometimes what I do is I'll just run my finger along it and that will just flatten it out okay I'll give it a bit of a stretch so what it'll do is it'll just relax everything into place um, so that is another thing that I do with this sort of stuff um, with like applique and stuff like that not so much with embroidery but when I do my back stitch as I said um, I hold it in hand and I sort of bunch it all up in here and I just work a little section and I smooth it as I go and flatten it and then just work that little section and then smooth and flatten it it does go together very quickly like it, it's not a slow process stitching in the hand and anybody that's a cross stitcher that stitches in hand when I first started cross stitching that's how I stitched in hand I actually sat there and stitched in hand and I'm a lot quicker but I was learning and my stitches didn't look that crash hot. Now, pick your poison on um, this week. I actually did the bottles uh, to the right hand side of the um, purple one. I actually did that in hand. And um, so since from when I began to now, because I've stitched in hoop and I've got the hang of my tension, 
it's a looking a lot better so i'm thinking that some of my smaller projects i will end up doing in hand and i'm a lot quicker in hand stitching because i use the sewing method so i'm on top of my um of my fabric and once i get back into the swing of it i'm going to just pull out a project and i'm going to do it all in hand and i'll film that process because um i know that a lot of people are curious about stitching in hand i'm not an expert by any means i just know what's comfortable for me and it is a bit of finding what's comfortable for you all right so let's um do a little bit of stitching um as i said i um got to get some more floss so the color that I'm using for this is 898 I think it's the best color for this um, brown it stands out a little bit but um, not so much that it's smashing in the face so I do have to get some more of this floss um, I am using CXC so I will have to um, yeah get some more of that and I'm just trying to find where did I put my um, needle thread up um, I'm using two strands of floss as well. Um, just excuse me for a second. I had my needle threader last night and I've put it somewhere. I thought I'd put it back here. Because I knew I was filming. Ah, there it is. No, I didn't put it back. Of course I didn't. That'd be too easy. <laughs> oh, dearie me. So hopefully that is bright enough for you. I do, like, it's, it's bright enough for me. I almost need my sunglasses on. <laughs> So basically, as I said, we are using um, two strands and I'm just going to separate it and I'll thread my needle and then we'll just start doing some stitching and as I said, we'll, I'll probably have some um, sounds playing in the background and whatnot and then that way if I stop talking, um, I did that a couple of weeks ago on my um on my stitch with me and what's going on with that floss just there i'm gonna get rid of that i think christmas is there now um i did that a couple of weeks ago on my floss tube oh, and someone sent me a message and goes oh there's no sound i'm like there is i just stopped talking <laughs> i just yeah just stopped it was a bit weird but you know how it is <laughs> Right. Um, okay. Now, yeah, where did they just drop it out? <clears throat> All right. I can hear movement in the house now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where did I put it? There it is. Just moved that. Um. So yeah. So I'm just trying to take that moment and Saturday seems to be it where I'm just taking a moment I do have quite a number of quilts to still get done I yeah you know how it is life gets in the way um I'm getting most of them done I had a bit of a discussion with the ladies last night that I um are doing quilts for and uh yeah so they should be all quilted by Monday and then or at least I'll only have one left all right, so I just um, I just tie a knot in the back and just start it that way, and then and I have talked about when you do back stitch to make sure that you're getting even. You go in down where you come where the last stitch ends, and then you go underneath. And this thread here needs to be in the center, okay? And if you do that, you'll get a nice even stitch all the way along, no matter what size that you're using okay and you can see there they're they're somewhat uniformed i am not overly fussed because overall no one is going to come up to your piece and go if you're putting it in a show yeah okay they're going to come up and scrutinize your stitching but for us crafters that are just doing it for the joy of crafting and not putting it into a show um you know you just do the best you can and enjoy the process don't rob yourself the, of the joy of stitching if you go a little bit wonky it doesn't matter just keep moving on so tell me in the comments below what are you working on right now are you doing some slow stitching or are you just watching um are you doing this project have you decided that you're going to give wool felt a go and if you have just leave me a comment down below 
I've got a few things. I've got a few things to record today. I've got a couple of shorts to record um, for the bingo um, challenges, which we now have a stitching. And no, the form is not up in the group yet because I'm just tweaking it a little bit more. It will go up at some stage um, before Sunday, the, the day today, today the 5th. So it'll be up, I think it's the 5th. No, Tuesday is the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, yeah, today's the 5th of November. So the first roll for the sewing and the stitching challenge for the end of the year. Um, which will now take us into the new year um, is going up on the 6th and it'll go up as a short and so I've still got a couple of hours to get that form up for you so you can see there that I just sort of give it a bit of a stretch so basically when you're doing it and you've got it all bunched up in your hand you're just really working a little bit at a time and when and I'll show you if you pull your tension too tight it will bunch up okay but if you just relax it and um, stitch it without putting too much tension you want it to come down to the fabric but you don't want to pull it so tight that it starts puckering the base fabric okay so you just want to slowly stitch along and try and get your stitches as even as possible I am NOT the quilt police I am NOT the stitching police I am a firm believer in joy in in enjoying the pro that is a mouthful um enjoying the um process and basically just having fun and not getting hung up on perfection anybody that's done classes in person with me would have often heard me say don't let perfection rob the joy of your stitching or your sewing because that's what it does it robs the joy of your craft and of course, you know, having pins in place as well also helps it to relax a lot. And um, that way you can just, yeah, it is a little bit problematic if you're, you know, when you are stitching in hand because you will inadvertently stab yourself. <laughs> so see here, I've come a little bit too far. So what sometimes I'll do is I'll just go down where I probably should have come out and then I will just come up. I don't worry about necessarily unpicking it. This is going to end up with wadding on the back um, for padding and stuff like that. So you're not going to have a problem feeling those. Um, you know, if you've gone back a couple of stitches, no one's going to ever see it. So yeah, you just want to just stitch along. I just take little bites. My stitch is probably about an eighth of an inch in, um, Increments, maybe a little, little slightly bigger, maybe. Yeah, and that's just how I do it. And as I said, I just go along and um, basically I'm just, we're doing the branches right now. And I also like to keep the, the section that I'm stitching, I'll keep that um, flat so my fingers are underneath. Like you can see there, I've got like two fingers, so it's not all well, actually, there's three, my little ones down here, but the two. Um, my ring finger and my middle finger are actually here and they're working as a little like they keep it flat for me as I'm doing it so I sort of yeah I use my body as my tensioner if that makes sense fabric tensioner so yeah it's hard to explain like especially when you're not in person and you're just doing this on camera it's really hard to um see exactly what I'm doing but you get the general idea so I try to talk you through it um, so you get a better understanding of it because you're seeing my actions as I'm talking about it so yeah so that's how I do it and believe me I've stuck myself a bit <laughs> all right another thing that you might want to use as well is some thread conditioner I have I was doing some stitching in the bedroom last night. It's not out here at the moment. There are a couple of different products on the market. Um, I just recently got one, which I forgot to uh, to show at my haul. Um, I got the spooky box from Fat Quarter, so I'll probably show that um, next week on Crafting with DDs. But um, yeah, so they had some thread conditioner in there, and I have always just used Thread Magic, um, and I thought 
I was got my daughter to have a look. I'm going to have to have a closer look because she probably didn't look properly. But um, I thought it was in my sewing box, but it wasn't. So I don't know where the heck that is. Um, she checked my big one too. Maybe she didn't check this one. It's definitely not in there. It's definitely not in my binding box because um, I've used it elsewhere. So that's my binding box. So this was a little box that I got. It's got a couple of pin cushions in the top. I actually want to get in there and stuff them a little bit more because I'll show you see what happens the needles disappear because there's yeah you put them in and they go right down and then they disappear but you can get them to come back out you just push the the thing but there's nothing like there's no hard base behind that and there's not enough stuffing in there so I they're glued in I believe they're glued in so I've got to get in there somehow and um, yeah and stuff them maybe put like open it up and restuff them and get them a little bit fatter like I would prefer them to sit out like if I pull the fabric I prefer them to sit up a little bit whereas they sit almost flush because there's not enough stuffing <clears throat> and I'm thinking that I might just recreate them and put some um put some like crushed walnuts in there but yeah so I've got this binding box and um, so I've got a pin cushion in there and then I've got all the different colors but I've also been using this as my sashiko box as well there's another chalk pen that I use Bowen chalk pen I usually have a setup where I've got a lot of things duplicated so this one is like mostly my hand sewing um, and so I've got a, a needle threader in there okay these little needle threaders are pretty good um, and I tried to keep it as neat as possible. <clears throat> I've got one of these rings that I use for my sashiko. I'm onto my last thread of sashiko. Um, and then I've just got all the colors of, of, that I use a lot of for my bindings. And I use um, Gutemann thread because I find that to be the strongest thread for binding, especially on kids' ones. And I've just got some little thread snips in there, which they're not that fabulous, but they, they do the job. And then I've got my pin cushion so I've got a couple of extra pins in there and um, I've got like a little tin that I got from the um, so sampler box. It has some little buttons in it that I use for my pin cushions and then it's got some wonder clips so that keeps that all neat and tidy. And I've got a pair of rainbow scissors and I generally don't have um, scissor keeps on the scissors that are in here sometimes I do like I, I put something pretty on them if it's small enough I do but I find that they just get tangled up in the um, in the flot in the the floss that's in here or the um, the the threads and stuff like that so yeah so basically I just have that all in there and then I'll have my in cushion there and then everything is just sort of neat and tidy and yeah and this is, I just picked this up and I know that I've got all my bits and pieces in it for binding because I don't know if a lot of you know, I actually do binding service. So if you've got a quilt that you don't want to um, do the binding on, you just send it to me and I do it for a small fee. Um, yeah, I even create your binding for you and put it on and you can send your fabric to me. But you can see there that that just opens up and it's neat and tidy. And it's got a cute little design in it and everybody knows that this is my box and no one touches it um, and as I said I can probably get in there because this just opens and the little design comes out so if I wanted to change this up I could but I'm not I never change it so they've just put like little bits of wood in there and then just create a little design with some gingham and made a little feels like a little toy thing but you can see there, there's a pin there that I had a needle that had gone down. Um, but you can see they're not really puffy. They need to be a bit puffier. Um, they are hot glued in, so I should be able to peel it off and you won't be able to um, see it. At all. just maybe put a slit here, and which you won't see, and just stuff it a little bit. I would have preferred to have um, walnut shells in it, but you know, and I always get everything that you want. And then it just fits back down and there you go. So yeah, I actually have a cross stitch. I've got another box that has a window in it and I've got a cross stitch that I want to do on it. Um, but yeah, I haven't done it. And I'm thinking that I'm going to do it next year because I'd like to start using that box because it's just sitting over there and it's just got stuff in it. 
that I'm not using, but I'd really like to dress it up a little bit. So that will be a project for next year um, that I'd like to get done. Lots and lots of plans and I don't seem to have the time to do it. <laughs> That's where these videos come in handy because I can tell you now this would not be getting done if I did not have to. This would be still sitting in its packet form um, but because I decided to do um, the slow stitching that day I have now got a, a project that I can use and that's why I'm just doing a little bit at a time and uh, just going along as I need to. Okay so I now need to turn my work because I'm right handed. Okay, so I need to turn my work. And as I said, I, I try to stitch close to me. In this case, I'm actually gonna stitch um, a little bit further away from me, but it's quite a thin piece that I'm doing. That pin is so gonna get me in a minute. Okay, so at this stage, I just will make sure that everything is laying where I need it to go. Um, this is moving a little bit, so I'll just stick a little pin in there just to hold it while I readjust so I know that that's not going to move and that's exactly where I want to stitch it. Um, I played around a little bit more last night because some of the things had moved but I've got to be mindful that this part of the tree has like a larger bird so you can see this is this branch here and now I'm stitching this branch here so it's got like circles on the end and then you've got your leaves and everything else on there as well so I've still got to create these birds I've still got to create these circles um, my main focus right now is to just get this tree done and down here she's just got lines of stitching going up and down the tree i'm actually i'm um, going to draw out like at the base here i'm just going to draw out a knot and uh, maybe a couple of little swirls and just sort of create a little bit of bark but i'll draw that out first before i stitch it and that's it once I've got this tree down and all the leaves done the rest isn't too bad this is going to be pretty intensive um, because of just the sheer number of little circles and stitching that I'm going to put on there. Um, I still have to look at the size of them and whatnot, but most of it is just like a little bit of long stitch, a little bit of whip stitch, maybe some crosses, some French knots. There's not a great deal. And the same as these, like you, um, you put these down and then you've just got straight stitching on it and then you've got a line of a, a circle of French knots. This has got a zigzag and French knots. And so it, the embroidery will actually dress it up quite a bit. And basically what I'm thinking of doing with this one um, is actually putting all these circles down first and then doing all the stitching. I think there is some stitching that she does on them, but as I said, the little bits of, um, the little bits of, leaves that I've done cutting them out were just really cumbersome and hard to do um well they weren't hard to do they were just cumbersome and it wasn't enjoyable like it was quite frustrating because I've got chuggy little fingers and it just wasn't happening for me and I couldn't hold them with tweezers I needed to hold them in my hands because I needed to put like pressure on the back so I could put the the stitches through and it was just yeah it was not fun. It was not a fun experience at all. So, I'm thinking by next week, um, I will, I'll, I'll have another video probably where I'll be still stitching this, but I think by the end of next week, cause I'm going to take this away to, to retreat and, um, do some on it maybe because I said that last time and I didn't do anything on it. Um, yeah, so if I get some stitches, more stitches in it, I reckon by the t next time you see it, not this weekend, not today, but not next weekend, the weekend after, we'll be ready to start putting some of these leaves on and, and start adding some colour um, to it. So I'm looking forward to doing that because at the moment it's not very exciting, but hopefully you've got a little project, a little wool felt project on the go and you can stitch along with me and you can get your project done and we can just work on it together each Saturday. It's like we're hanging out together. Okay. 
I am loving it though. It's so, it's such a fun project. I so can't wait to have it. It's going to take pride of place. It's not going in the lounge room. It's not going anywhere where my family is. This will take pride of place on my bed. <laughs> and it actually firms it up. Like it actually feels really stable. Like this has got no stabilizer on the back but it doesn't feel flimsy at all. Like once you've stitched it down, it's like, as and if you've been here since the start, you know that this is the first time I've done anything like this. Um, so I'm really surprised at how firm the, the, the felt has made it. Like it's, yeah, and it's not puckering or anything like that, which is great. Um, which I did, I, I had full faith in it that it wasn't going to pucker because as I said, I have stitched in hand before. Um, I. I've only been using hoops since the end of 2019. Prior to that, I never used a hoop for embroidery. I, you know, I only started cross stitching um, in 2019, so I've only been doing it a little while. Um, but I've been cra doing many different crafts for all my life, basically. I think I was about seven or eight when I first started. I was seven because I was living at Minto, or as Gail and I say, Minnow. Um, I was living at Minto and um, my grandmother for, um, I was six for the, that Christmas I lived at Minto and she bought me a latch hook kit and then for my birthday, which was the following in 1977. Um, yeah, 19, so 19, the 19, Christmas 1976, I got my first latch hook. I'm just thinking back to where, like when I done it. And it was a little, um, a little dog and it made a cushion. So I got that. Um, from my grandmother because my grandmother was a seamstress so my mum was not crafty at all but my grandmother was a seamstress and so um, I got a latch hook kit from her and she used to always give me all sorts of stuff um, that, and she obviously felt that I was old enough to do that then so she um, gave me that for 1976 Christmas and then my um, my brother was born in 1977 in the October and he, um, yeah, and that then my birthday just before he was born, oh no, I was living at Eastwood. He was a year old then, that must have been 1978. Okay, 1977 Christmas was when I got the, the latch hook, 1978, I got my first sewing machine, which was a Holly Hobby sewing machine from my grandmother. So prior to that, I had done the latch hook. That was my very first thing that I'd done all by myself. And um, and I had done a little bit of hand stitching with my grandmother, like sewing a little, um, little doll's blanket or something. It was just prior to me getting the, um, little holly hobby sewing machine and um yeah so that's when i got them so yeah since i was eight i've been crafting and i'm pretty sure i did like paper crafts and stuff like that um with my grandmother like card making and very basic card making um just like little thank you cards and stuff like that i remembered i, I have a vivid memory of that um doing that sort of thing as well so I've pretty much, and I probably did a lot of, um, you know, stuff that I've forgotten about prior to that, but I remember, yeah, it was definitely um, 1978, because I remember getting it at Minto and my brother um, was a year old, because he was born in 77 and um, he was a year old when we lived at Minto because we had his first birthday there. Um, <clears throat> And my uncle Reg got really drunk. 
<laughs> Things you remember. <laughs> but like looking back on it now, my uncle Red was obviously an alcoholic because <clears throat> he always had a beer, always was drinking. Um, he divorced from my auntie Evelyn many years ago and I'd say that that I don't know the real reason but I'd say that was a factor in it <clears throat> his drinking was not something that she wanted to do to have in her life I guess now I've put my needle down where the heck did I just put that yeah there it is got it. all right got that we can now continue stitching but yeah I remember my brother's birthday like in our family first birthdays were a big deal um <clears throat> uh, and as I said we were living at Minto which wasn't a great place to live and um yeah like it wasn't a great place to live it was a, a housing commission so that's like cheap housing um for families and stuff like that and it was a brand new estate and it was just like yeah and it had it like a it was in a big circle and it had a big park in the in the center and i remember talk of there was like you could say where we lived we were directly across the road from the park most people were that were on the outs like on the roadside of the um of the circle <clears throat> but there was like little um paved streets that go in like that but they were like little cul-de-sacs and it had like 10 or 15 houses up in it like it was a pretty big estate and it was great because I could roller skate there I was right into roller skating I've been roller skating since I was about six years old um it was yeah it was just after I went to live with my um my parents and um because prior to that I lived with my grandmother and um, we, I was living at Har uh, Par Parramatta and Harris Park. I went to Param Parramatta Primary um, for a little while there. And then I was at Harris Park for a little, little while. Um, and then we moved to, um, to, where did we move to after that? Um, we moved to Eastwood because the day that we moved into our house in Eastwood my mum went into labour <laughs> luckily we were only 10 minutes around the corner from um, the hospital they woke me up in the middle of the night and um, we didn't know anybody they knocked on the neighbour's door and left me with the neighbour and who we didn't know and we knew that they had kids they had little kids like us and um, left my sister and um, my brother uh, left my sister and I with the neighbours because she was she was two or just about to turn two because um, he was born uh, in the October. There's only a couple of weeks between them, and um, yeah, and he was uh, about to to um, she was about to turn to uh, turn two. I was. Um, had just turned seven because my birthday was in the August this was the October and we had just moved from Harris Park to Eastwood and um, we were about 10 minutes around the corner from the hospital anyway I was my bed wasn't even set up like we had literally just unpacked the truck and we're starting to um like that's an extreme nesting moving house <laughs> anyway mum went into labor and <clears throat> my mum has children like when she gives birth she has them really quick which then puts her body into like can put it into a massive shock and we I think the reason we moved there is because it was closer to the hospital and um anyway they woke me up in the middle of the night dropped me at the neighbor's place and then um they off they toddled and then um she basically um had gone into labor and she may have been in labor all day who knows but um basically they got to they got to the um hospital which was 10 minutes away and within 10 minutes uh, within seven minutes of her being at the hospital my brother was born um that so she and and the doctor basically said that's it you cannot have any more children the next one will kill you 
um, that because it's too fast. The body can't. The body has a great way of, you know, dealing with trauma and stuff like that. But if it's fast, it doesn't cope as well, apparently. So that's what I was told. Um, even as I, that story had never changed um, as I was growing up and, and whatnot, um, which is not great when you have your mother there for your firstborn and your firstborn takes 17 hours to be born and then everybody, because they're used to mum, you know, just spitting these kids out. I know that sounds gross, but <laughs> um, everybody in the family is used to mum who can just, just like have kids at the drop of a hat. Um, I think I was her longest, which was two and a half hours. Um, and both my brother and sister were born very quickly. I think my sister was within 30 minutes of going into labour and my brother, well, I don't know the exact time frame, but it was within seven, within at least half an hour because, you know, like by the time she got us to the neighbours and all the rest of it and then drove to the hospital, he was born. So, <clears throat> but yeah, anyway, um, the doctor basically said, that's it, no more, you can't have any more kids. And um, yeah, so that was the end of that. And she wanted to have a lot of kids, apparently. I don't know why. She not, wasn't the best mother in the world, but anyway. I know that sounds very ungrateful of me and all the rest of it, but my parents aren't great. They were very toxic, very toxic human beings. And very um, selfish as well and whatnot, but I don't have anything to do with them anymore, so it doesn't really matter. And they've never even met my kids. So, it's just better that way. I don't want to expose my children to that sort of toxicity. That'd just break them. And I think my parents have done a fine job of breaking all their children. They don't need to, to do that to my children or any of my nieces or nephews. Um, that no doubt my brother is still has something to do with them. I know my sister has nothing to do with them. Um, but I think she still talks to mum occasionally, but she lives over in England and hasn't been here for a long time apparently, according to her. But then I don't really trust her either. She's not, uh, she's not a reliable narrator. <laughs> she, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. I do sorry about, apologise about my croaky voice. <clears throat> it's just not clearing today for some reason. Um, but um, yeah, so that's when I started crafting. And so my Holly Hobby sewing machine, it was so cool. I made some doll clothes on it and doll blankets. And, and um, it's quite funny. Some of the things that I've done crafting wise and um, drawing wise and stuff like that like I can't draw I, I am I cannot draw but I had like when I was in high school as you do when you're in class you sit there and doodle you know like I got my holly hobby sewing machine and I was making doll blankets and stuff like that um, there I'm the first quilter as far as I'm aware I am the first quilter in my family um, but it was quite funny because I was making those things and sewing bits of fabric together and, and essentially making little bigger bits of fabric. I did not know that this was quilting. Um, and then I think back over my life and some of the things that I do, like I, when I started quilting quilts on the long arm machine, well, I started on a mid arm machine and then I bought myself a long arm machine. Um, when I started doing that, I, the lady that got me to do it, um, I was being a smart aleck and said, you know, like, oh, I couldn't afford to get my quilt quilted, the first quilt that I made. And I was being really sassy and a smart aleck and just went, you should let me use that, um, so that long arm machine and I'll quilt the quilt myself. Anyway, she was being an equal, equally uh, smart aleck and turned around and said, yeah, right, you can do it, but you can, you can, I reckon you should use invisible thread. So my very first quilt that I done, which I still have, and it's very well loved, um, I basically made the quilt and it was from the magazine Get Creative from Spotlight. Um, it was a block of the month they did for the first year, 13 months of their um, publication, which I don't think that's in publication anymore. Um, and it was the Get Creative magazine. 
and basically I made the um, block of the month in that and it actually had mistakes and stuff like that I was the and there was a few of us that were doing it I was the only one in the end that actually finished my quilt um, and actually quilted it bound it and all the rest of it now when I started doing it there was a lot of older ladies around quilt police don't put this fabric together don't put that fabric together then I picked the fabrics that I really liked and I put them together and they were saying that it wasn't going to work and all this sort of stuff and it turned out to be the most beautiful quilt that it's not the most beautiful but it is a beautiful quilt nonetheless and if I had to listen to them I wouldn't have got the quilt that I wanted they were saying to me oh you should start with something a little bit simpler there was a there was a lot of things said that would have discouraged me had I not been stubborn and pig-headed and went no nope, that's what I'm using I don't care I've got to live with it not you um all this sort of stuff like I said it politely obviously um anyway I ended up as I said being a smart aleck and said you should let me use that like this is an expensive piece of equipment. This woman didn't know me from Adam. And then she turns around and she goes, yeah, right. As long as you use, like, you can use invisible thread because I think that'll look really good on your quilt. And I'm like, okay, no worries. Nothing like diving in the deep end, eh? Without, like, sink or swim right there. And um, I got on that machine. It took me a while to work out the bobbin and all the rest. I've never used equipment like this. I'd never used a machine where I had this bobbin thing going in there and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, so anyway, I got on there and it took me, I, I came in, like I was living out of town and I ended up coming in on a day that I normally wouldn't come into town. So it cost me some fuel to get it quilted. And um, I came in and I came in early. She met me at the shop earlier because she knew that it was going to take a little while because it was a, I think it's a queen size. It fits on my queen size bed, so it must be a queen size quilt. I can't remember the exact dimensions of it now. Um, anyway, she came in early and met me at the shop and set me up and got me going and all the rest of it. And I basically quilted all day to get it done because it was pretty slow going because it was only a mid arm. I could was very limited to the size of the pattern that I wanted um, to have on it and she basically showed me how to set up the bobbin how to set up and I used the the um, Q-Bot she had the Q-Pot system which is one that I'm still using now like it's there's nothing wrong with it I still can get up-to-date patterns and stuff like that for it and so don't fix what's not broke right and um, yeah so basically um, <clears throat> she showed me how to use that um, so we did the first row together and then she walked away because the shop opened and she had classes and she walked away and left me to my own devices and I'm thinking to myself this woman is crazy there is no way that I would let anybody in my machine that's never used one before anyway as it turned out she was testing me to see if I was capable of, of quilting um, anyway, as it turns out, I took to it like a duck takes water. And then I thought about like, all the, I'll just start looking at all the patterns and, and all that sort of stuff through, um, through the books and, and everything that she had. And I started looking at all the patterns and then I realized that I had been doing this pretty much all my life. When I um, was a kid, and this is where this conversation is leading. When I was a kid and at high school and even in primary school, I used to set my books out. So I'd get a book and then I'd put an inch border all the way around. It was probably not an inch. It was probably half an inch border all the way around. I'll stand corrected because um, I use centimetres here. But I'm just saying now, inch because I work with inches all the time. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so it was half a centimetre, which is not – let me see. So – that's an inch there so an inch is two and a half centimeters okay so it was it would have been a centimeter actually so that's about half an inch <coughs> excuse me so i had that all the way that uh, between the space of my um, index fingers there i had that all the way around so i used to write everything i had a, a perfect one centimeter um and i at the beginning of the year would sit there and do in red pen and I would do all of my books that way. Anyway, um, basically, and then when I was sitting in class and I need to doodle when I'm in a class situation, I need to be doing something. It's not because I'm 
any, uh, there's no labels on me or anything like that. I've not been diagnosed anything. I just like to doodle when I'm listening. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fully listening. My teachers used to always say to me, if they didn't know any better when it came to exams and got good marks, they would go, if they didn't know any better, they would have said that I cheated. But nine times out of 10, they sat me up the front because I was a little bit of a, um, you know, muck around in class type girl and I was extremely bored. School bores the hell out of me. I, yeah. And it's just, it just bores me. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I would sit there and doodle. So I would have like chains of hearts and like squiggly lines and little doohickeys in them and like little, maybe like come along and do a heart and then keep the chain going. Or I'd do a chain of hearts where you go one this way. Um, so you start it like this and you just and it ends up doing a chain of hearts so there's one upside down one's the right way and I would do that all the way around other times like and it would depend on the book so um if it was my science book that actually uh, one of my year eight books actually one of my year eight books every border had like there was a red one and I had that centimeter um, border around it everything was a pebble so basically I would keep the pen down and I would just do pebbles. And that's exactly how you do pebbles on a long arm machine. So essentially I was doing this quilting patterns in my borders. I just, I'm spewing that I don't have any of those books left. I know that one of my science teachers kept my um, science book because he just thought it was fabulous. <laughs> you know, and I was very, um, with my assignments and stuff like that, I, I was very, I do all sorts of stuff like that. I, I just, yeah. But anyway, and it's, it's quite surprising to me that I haven't done journaling until just recently. I've never been a journaler. I've never even done a dear diary moment or anything like that. Everything that I talk about, it comes out from my memories. Um, and yeah, so I, it's just, yeah. And I did that for so long in my um, school books and, and all that sort of stuff. And um, so when it came to quilting, I think because I had done that, that's why I took to it. Because even the lady who had been doing it for many years, she struggled to do free motion stuff. Not that I'm great at free motion either because the majority of my customers just want edge to edge stuff. And it's easier for me to do the Q-Bot um, because they want those particular patterns. Because I'm not a great drawer, I'm a great doodler. So when it comes to doing like stippling and stuff like that, I do all that freehand and I do lots of different things and little asterisks that look like little stars and I do hearts and I do, you know, all sorts of things and just sort of play with it. Most of the quilting that I do free motion though is ruler work. So I do a lot of straight line quilting and stuff like that, especially on my sort of um, my own quilts and whatnot. I just really like that. But I think that's why I was able to stand there for hours at the end. And some of the reps that used to come to the shop and even here when I had the shop open here and had reps coming, now I do most of my um, store shopping online um, because the reps don't tend to come out here as often as they used to. Um, and so basically even the reps like would say like, don't you get bored? And I'm like, no, I don't. I just love watching the machine stitch it out. You know, sometimes I might get a little bit, oh, I wish it was over. I wish I was doing something else, but it's not even a wish I was doing something else. I just want to be doing something else. Um, and I just have to wait an hour or two before I can do it. So, you know, a little bit of delayed gratification is not a bad thing, as they say. Um, so yeah, sorry about my squeaky chair, it's got worse. <laughs> If you can, I don't think you can hear it with my mic on, but you might hear it every now and again. Um, my other chair is going off to the workshop to get welded um, because the weld broke on it. And when Red looked at it, he goes, that was a terrible weld. He's a welder by trade. And um, so, yeah, he looked at it and he said, that is a shocking weld. So he's going to take it to, to work and uh, weld it up for me. But he's got to get the jag on. The road first because that's the priority at the moment otherwise savannah's going to have a meltdown and we don't want that but anyway um back to what i was saying yeah and i think that that's why i just took to it so easily like um and even she said she goes that you know it's just like you've got a nat natural aptitude for it so you know i mean it's not i'm not afraid to try anything and obviously 
you know, my channel reflects that. I, you know, and I have people say to me all the time, you just, you, you just get in and have a go. Like, it's just fabric, it's just thread. You know, yes, you can wreck it and you can wreck it really bad, but at the end of the day, um, I always take, I always take extreme care if it's not my quilt. Um, you know, if I'm doing it for someone else, that is as precious as a newborn baby to me, and it is treated as such. You know, it is looked after, and I'm vigilant when it comes to. Where did you come from? Oh, you're over there. That's fine. All right. You can see where you've come from. My piece hanging out there, so we'll just tack that down. I know where that goes. Otherwise, I'm going to end up stitching it in the wrong place thinking it's from here. Um, but yeah, and uh, that's sort of how I fell into, and that's what I say, I actually fell into this job by me being a smart aleck and going and being tight, not wanting to um, pay, she was quite expensive to get stuff quilted. Um, not wanting to to pay and at the time we were a single income family because the kids were little like um they were tiny little little humans then and um yeah so <clears throat> i um excuse me for a second i'm just gonna have a drink and that is exactly how i fell into quilting i just basically being a smart aleck, being a tight, and that lady also being a smart aleck going, yeah, right, thought she was going to trip me up with the invisible thread. I do not like invisible thread. And I don't recommend it at all for people to use um, for quilting, but it has its place. It does have its place. I, I personally do not recommend it. Um, and it's not, it's called mono, monofilament is what the thread is called. So that's monofilament, and it is like stitching with fishing wire, fishing line. It is painful. And I don't like to use it because once I use it, and I don't know whether this is just my machine, but from the time I've got my machine and I have done um, quite a, a number of um, monofilament quilts, and um, especially on like something that is gonna, um, like they don't wanna see the cotton, they want it to blend into, like I've done it on a lot of, um, um, well, what, like oriental in, inspired fabrics. I've done it a lot on those because they usually have a lot of colors in and the fabrics are what you want to speak, not the quilting. Um, so I've had customers that um, want the monofilament. But what happens is, and as I said, I don't know whether this is just my machine or whether this is true of everybody's machine. Um, every time I use it, I had to get uh, Greg to come and reset my tension and um, reset my timing because um, it just wouldn't be right after I used it. So basically what would happen is people would want their monofilament done and a lot of them used to do it for um, the local show here. And I was like, yeah, I'm happy to do it, but this is how it's gonna be. We are gonna block out a month or six weeks, depending on how many quilts I have. Um, and, and a lot of the time it can break as well. Like, yeah, it takes a little bit of setup and stuff like that. So, um, I'm definitely going to get rid of these scissors because these are as blunt as anything. <laughs> I do not. Actually, I'll probably just leave them for paper. I'll put a little book on the end of it because I work for paper and stuff. So, and they're quite, they're, they're stalk scissors, but they're bigger. So I work for paper. I'll just put them up in my stationery and then I'll know they're for paper. Um, yeah, so I would have to get Greg come in and reset my timing and all that sort of stuff. And, um, so what would happen is, if I was using the, the Q-Bot or anything like that, um, what would happen is, as I'm stitching, depending which way it was going, if it was going up the quilt, it would start skipping stitches, which is an indication that your timing's out. And so, um, yeah, I'd have to get him to come and sort that out for me. So in the end, what I would do, um, and I only, like, there's only a select few of people that actually want that sort of stuff. 
So it was quite easy for me to say, okay, this is what's gonna happen. I would bring them at say at the beginning of the year and I would say, what quilts do you have that you want done? Are you wanting monofilament? Um, Cause these are ladies that generally put stuff into the local shows all the time. Um, and so um, our neighbors just drove off really aggressively. So they must be peeved. <laughs> Brendan went out and yelled at them this morning, like naughty children that they were. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so I'd ring them at the beginning of the year, just before show season and say, right, I'm gonna block out this month. You have to have your quilts done here and all the rest of it. So I would do all the monofilament quilts in one sitting and then that way I would have Greg on standby and we worked out a system where he would turn up and I would have it all done um, it was long hours sometimes I would work 12 14 hours at the quilt machine um, and I would do that for seven days a week I would work it out when Brennan was going to be home so he could look after the kids and all that sort of stuff but my kids were pretty good like they understood that that was what my job was if they wanted to do karate if they wanted to do dancing and all that sort of stuff that's what I had to do so we had you know extra money for that because all our other money was going on to our house and you know for bills and, and general living expenses not extra stuff and um yeah so basically um that's what I do and then Greg would turn up fix my machine and then it'd be right for the next 11 months or whatever and I would do it just like I would do it probably two months out maybe two and a half months out from the show because that's and then all the other quilts for the show and everything would get done as soon as the the timing was reset and um it had been serviced and whatnot and when I did monofilament I would actually charge them um I, I don't normally charge setup fees and stuff like that, but for the, the monofilament to cover the, the servicing of the machine after using it, um, they got charged an extra, like a $20 um, maintenance fee on that. But they were, were happy that they had someone local doing it and they understood. Um, and I was quite honest with them and explained to them. And Greg was here for, for a couple of the ladies and explained to them what was happening and stuff like that. So they were quite happy to do that because they didn't have to travel um, to get their stuff done or they didn't have to send it in the post. They could come and see me and get it done. And, you know, some of those ladies aren't quilting anymore. Um, I don't do monofilament as often these days. There's not a, much of a call for it. Um, and it was quite like every machine's different so every um, machine will want to use a particular type of monofilament and I actually got a really good one from Sullivan's here in Australia it was a Sullivan's brand and it very rarely broke it was slightly thicker um, but it was really good like I can use it in my embroidery machine I can which I don't have anymore I don't use it as an embroidery machine I could use it in that I could use it in my general sewing machine because if I wanted to do quilting on that, I could do it as well um, for smaller projects and whatnot. And it was great, like it was a really good brand. So when I realized that that was the brand that I was going to be using and stuff like that, I brought, I, I purchased so much of it because I was doing quite a bit of it and it only come in, in the small spools. So, you know, for a quilt, you could end up using two or three spools, but it wasn't overly expensive um, and I don't even know if you can still get it because that's how often I use it now like I've, I've got a box of it it's kept in a dust free environment in a dark um, closet that um, nothing goes near or anything like that and it's um it's right up the back of a closet like it's hardly any air gets in there I reckon um, so yeah it's it and it still works fine when I have used it um, sometimes I'll use it for hand stitching as well um, like hand quilting, which I don't do a lot of. That's probably one area of quilting that I probably should focus a little bit more on. I have done some hand quilting, but I have found it to be, um, I'm not real good at it. I don't get the stitches even and stuff like that. I like the look of, um, oh, I think it was Crafty Gemini. She did a, a tutorial and I can't remember whether it's on her YouTube channel or whether it was part of the quilt club that I was in. Um, she did a big quilting project, big, big stitch quilting project. And she just used like embroidery floss, um, Pearl 8 or Pearl 12 or something like that. Um, she, I think it was actually Sulky uh, 12 weight that she used 
to be honest. Um, cause I'm going back like 2015, I think she did it. So it's a while, if it's on a YouTube channel, it's a while back. Um, yeah, but I was in a, a cook club with her. Her clubs are great. Um, and I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing any of her clubs at the moment um, because I'm trying not to spend any money because of uni fees and all the rest of it. They have gone up and so, yeah, and as you know, we're trying to help Savannah um, get that all out of the way. And my husband the other day, bless him, bless his little soul, he, I have been swirling money away, okay, for quite some time. And he doesn't watch this, so he won't know. And Brennan's highly motivated by the dollar <laughs> on that. If he knows, he doesn't like to get credit, um, so he won't go to a bank, he won't, like, and that's why we're paying, you know, we've done things the hard way, but we don't have any debt except for our mortgage because we just couldn't swing that. But um, we don't have any, we have one credit card, which is a work credit card. Um, but other than that, we don't have any uh, personal loans or anything like that. My long arm machine um, was the only other thing that we paid off. And then as soon as we had money there to pay it out, we paid it out. Um, everything else I have, you know, we've saved up or we've, you know, sold a car and maybe got it with, with that. But anyway, he, um, I, he does all the working, I take care of all the admin. So I take care of the tax, I take care of the, the finances, the bank accounts, where the money's got to go, all the bills, all that sort of stuff. So that is my job. I am basically his admin assistant um, to a certain degree. Like he does his own emails and stuff like that because he knows what he's talking about. And a lot of the time he'll come in and just rattle something off to me and I've got to ring him anyway to say, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, so basically he was the other day and like Savannah knows because I said to her, because she was getting worried that there was, because we don't talk finances with really that much with the kids and, and what's going on and, and, and whatnot um, because, they, you know, they've got their own stuff and all the rest of it and we just teach them how to save and we're hopeless savers but we've, been ma we've managed to teach our children I don't know how, but we've managed to teach our children how to save money. Savannah has been working for the last couple of years part-time and she has managed to leave home. She's leaving home with $10,000 backup rent in her account. She has squirreled and saved and collected bottles and cashed them in. To, like she uses the, um, the bottles that she collects to cash in for um, the, to get money for them. Like we get 10 cents a, a bottle here and um and so she has saved all that money but she buys her books with that so when she sees a book she'll just buy buy it out of that money but she doesn't buy books all the time like she'll just buy lump sums of them so sometimes she'll go and they'll all be on sale and she'll get them for like five or ten bucks and then for her birthday she gets um the book grocer box and for christmas she gets the advent one which are all there's 24 books in that box for 150 dollars, and they're all individually wrapped so she gets to unwrap all her books on the one like she just leaves it till christmas day and so yeah so she's got that for the last couple of years she's um got these boxes so she hasn't really been buying a lot of books so that money's all been saving up but yeah and so Brennan's a bit the same like if he, if he knows that he's got to fork out for something and he's got to go to a bank and ask for it he gets really anxious about it so he would rather just work really hard save up the money buy a car do it up sell it get the money that way and so he'll wheel and deal in cars and um all that sort of stuff and and he'll work extra hard, like he'll do long shifts and, and stuff, like he's self-employed so he can pick his own time, but he basically will work until 10 o'clock at night if he has to, he will keep working. Um, he's a machine, like, and I keep saying to him, no one works like you, Brendan, so don't expect it from people that you hire because it's not gonna happen. And I have to keep reiterating re that to him because otherwise he expects people to work like that and <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Anyway, um, but our girls do will work and they'll work hard and stuff like that. So they will go above and beyond and and um, really put in the not you know the hard yards and save up their money. 
And um, Neryl is the same. She, she's, she's tight as. She's quite happy to spend our money and save her money. And <laughs> I, just look at her. I look at her and just shake my head. But anyway, she saves her money. She's putting, doing the exact the same thing. I said to her, you know, you've got to save money for when you leave home because, you know, we're not always going to have, you know, a lazy 500 laying around to buy you out for rent because, let's face it, that's pretty much how much rent is for anywhere these days. You know, I said, we've still got to, you know, look after ourselves. It's not about looking after you, so you have to learn how to do that. And, um, yeah, so anyway, he says the other day, he goes, you know, we've got we've got um, four or five grand there for um, Savannah. Or we've put money away because he thinks I've only put the money he's told me to put away, but I've actually been squirrelling money away, like cutting back here, cutting back there. Um, and putting it away and I've been doing that for the last 18 months almost two years now and so we only I think we only need another year and a half tuition and she's done and so I told Savannah because she was starting to panic and um, and like Brendan was giving her money uh, to put away for uni and stuff like that so that's also going into the bank account as well and um, you know 100 bucks here 100 bucks there whatever like and that's not weekly or anything that'd be just you know sporadically but that's gone into the bank as well so she's got that there um, not into the where that money is but between her money and the money that I've been squaring on away we've almost got her four years tuition um, that, and that's why you haven't seen much hauls happening on my um, on my uh, channel and stuff like that I've been sort of just yeah pulled back and whatnot and um, like I've still got stuff, I haven't stopped living, but um, and buying stuff because I mean I like sparkly stuff. And I've gone away to retreats and stuff like that as well. And I've also put money away from a lot of the bags that I've sold and stuff like that in the last um, 12 months have been going away to her uni fees and and all that sort of stuff. So that's made her calm down a little bit. Like she's a lot calmer now because she knows that that money's there and she's got as I said she's saved 10,000 and by the time she leaves home she'll probably be a little bit higher because she's still working um, and she's working for Brendan getting paid there and that's all going into the bank as well um, yeah so because we don't believe in giving our kids something for nothing if they want something that isn't part of a necessity they have to work so there's been times where I've had Savannah out here and she's been making bindings for me or she's been sewing zips together for me or cutting fabric or putting stuff away. And um, so if she wanted something, that's sort of what we've done with the kids. And um, yeah, and then like Brennan goes, oh, you know, they can just work for us. And I'm like, no, they need to go and work for someone else first before they come and try and take advantage of us. Because let's face it, if you're working for your mum and dad, you're not going to put in the hard yards. Brendan come home to me, oh, it must have been about three or four weeks ago, and we're sitting there and he goes, because um, sometimes he questions my parenting opinions, as, you know, so parents do that. Like, not everybody agrees 100% that's how we're going to parent our kids. Sometimes it's a work in progress and, and whatnot. You know, the, the one thing, like when I first met Brennan, he's a big TV watcher. He's like, oh, we'll get, you know, we'll travel, when we do the traveling, we'll put, you know, um, you know, uh, what do they call them? Little DVD players, you know, into the car and all the rest of it. I'm like, no, the kids can look out the window and learn to use their imagination. And he so argued me with me on that. And the same as having TVs in the bedroom and that, oh, we'll get them a TV, no. And I stood my ground on that. And then he said to me, it was years later, we were driving along and we were playing, we play this stupid game in the car and he has no idea, like uh, geographically, he has no idea of things and, and whatnot. And I've got some funny stories about him and, and geography and, and all the rest of it. But we play this game with the girls and me and the girls still play it now. Sometimes we'll sit up late at night and you've got a letter of the alphabet and you go around the car and you've got to say all the, like we'll make it, it'll be countries or it might be cities or it might be towns or whatever. And you've got to rattle off and it doesn't have to be in your country. It can be just something that you've heard on the internet or whatever. And we rattle them off and all, all the, the rest of it. But Brendan will turn everything into like, he'll get, he'll, he'll say um, like, 
say it was P and we went Pakistan, then he will just start saying all these words by putting Stan on the end of it. <laughs> and it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and so it turns into a big, big joke. And he and we're driving, we we're coming back and we we're playing this game and we got home and he said to he turned around to me, he doesn't like to like most people, doesn't like to admit that, you know, I was right or he was wrong or whatever. Um, it's a thing. <laughs> and he said to me, he goes, I really, really wanted to put DVD players into the car. He goes, but I'm so glad that you stood your ground and didn't do it. And there's, you know, and there's been other incidences where he said, you know, like uh, with the working, he goes, I'm so glad that you told me not to just employ them to make them go out and work first. He goes, because Savannah, he goes, I thought that she was going to be, she's not exactly the most motivated person she's quite lazy um very slothy <laughs> and she's still doing stuff like she but she's a reader so she isn't a highly motivated person but when it comes to work she is and um he said to me he goes i honestly didn't think it was going to make a difference he goes but she's a gun like she gets in there Nera Lee's always been a gun like she gets in there she strips tires she works hard like she works harder than most of the blokes that Brendan hires and um yeah so she gets in there and just smashes stuff out and her motivation is not being told because she's a girl um that she can't do it so she won't allow people to tell her that if she's got to get down and dirty at the workshop she'll get down and dirty um you know like um, the guy that we had working for us that we've since re, um, let go, he basically turned around to Brennan and went, when you said Nero Lee was coming here to strip tyres, he goes, I laughed. I thought that was the most ridiculous thing. He goes, but man, she's a gun. She works better than anybody that we've had here stripping tyres. And, um, and I, I told her that and said, this is what was said that they reckon that he reckons you can't do it and she goes well that's not gonna happen <laughs> and so she went in there and she didn't hurt herself or anything like that like she wasn't being silly or anything like that she just got in there and worked hard so yeah so they've had to go off and work for other people to learn that you know not everybody you work with is going to be great um, not every boss is going to be awesome and when you go to work, you go to work to work. You don't go to work and play on your phone and stuff like that. So they've gone off and learned that in the real world and now they've come back and like, was well, narrowly still working out in the real world. Savannah's now doing work with Brendan and, and um, helping him get back on track and all the rest of it. So yeah, so she's gonna be leaving home soon. Like, and I think it's starting to scare her because normally she's a solitary cr creature like she'll spend more time on her own um, than actually out in the real world with us socialising. And lately she has been coming into my room and sitting on the end of the bed and just waffling and yeah, and all that sort of stuff. So I think she's starting to get quite anxious about it <clears throat> and whatnot. So yeah. But anyway, I have just used my last bit of thread and I've got to go hunting for some more of this thread. But that is how I do my stitching. And I just looked at the clock. Oh my goodness, I've been on for an hour and 40. I am so sorry I've kept you this long. Hopefully I have been entertaining. <laughs> um, yeah, so that I've only got this section here to do now. And then we will be to adding... So, and I'm, as I said, I'm going to put a little bit uh, like a knot in that just to dress it up a little bit because I don't know if you can see it or not, but she's just got lines going up it. I don't really like that. I'd like to make it a little bit more. I might do like some squiggly lines or something. It'll just be backstitch. Um, but yeah, but that's not a lot, lot to go. Now I've just got to go and find that uh, thread number. I'm pretty sure I've got three packets of CXC, so I'm bound to have some more in there. I'll just wrap another bobbin and get this done and and all the rest of it but i am going to head off and get on with the rest of my saturday thank you so much for joining me today i do hope that you enjoyed this little um moment to take that time and just sit back and relax and get some stitching in while i prattle on and um, that obviously i had a lot to say today uh, <laughs> but anyway hopefully also you've got some tips and tricks out of that um you can see here like there's a little deviation in that but i think that that just adds to the the 
um, to the 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 piece. Like I like I don't see that as anything wrong with that. But I'm sure there's people out there that would have not liked it. But anyway, each to their own, as they say. But I don't have much to go. Um, I will join you again next week, and um, I'll probably do some more backstitching and a little bit of prattling on. Um, I'm away at retreat next Saturday, so if there is no prattling, it's probably because I've just been held up, I've just recorded, and I've just put music over it. So I will find something that has some maybe nature sounds or some some sort of ambiance uh, music or um, sounds for you to just sit back and relax and, and enjoy yourself um, getting some stitching done, especially if you're trying to get some of your whips done and you want to allocate days to them. This is the best way to do it. Come and hang out with me for an hour and 40 minutes or an hour and um, get some more stitching done. All right, so as I said, have a fabulous day, everybody. Hope you get lots of crafting in and I will see you all again next time. Bye for now.